Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now then, whenever I talk to anti-EU Tories about the effect of leaving on the city and indeed the wider economy, they always say, ask Andrea Leadsom. She worked in the city, she was city minister for George Osborne, she knows what's going on. And on these matters, she is probably the leading voice of Vote Leave. Andrea Leadsom, welcome. Thanks. Now, of course, we're talking today very much about Mark Carney and his intervention. Wasn't he right to intervene? I mean, after all, the Bank of England has responsibility for the overall conduct of interest rates and the economy. If we left and there was a downturn, we'd point to say, why didn't you, why didn't you tell us? No, it, it was an incredibly dangerous intervention. You know, the core job of the Bank of England is to ensure financial stability. That's it. That is their job. So to get involved with some kind of purely speculative what might happen, what might households do, what might businesses do, that's just not mm. inside their remit. They're not there to promote financial instability, and that's what they've done. And you think by simply raising the question of the pound falling as a result of a Brexit vote, he has made it more likely? Totally. He, you know, th this whole point, what, what a central banker should do is to say, we have the tools to be able to deal with whatever the political decision is on June the 23rd. And if he doesn't think he has the tools, he should be privately talking to the Chancellor. What yeah. he's done instead is to come out with some nonsense, which is totally unjustifiable, purely speculative stuff on what might happen in the event that we leave, and also only looking at the downside. Well, I mean, almost everybody seems to agree that there would be some kind of jolt if we leave. Even Boris Johnson has said to be a jolt to business and in a sense isn't his job to warn us what's ahead if if that's what he really thinks and it was a unanimous report by the monetary policy committee well let, let's let's be very clear the the governor signs off on these things but also you know this is only looking at what doom scenario might be it doesn't take into account of the certain fact that we will have a 10 billion pounds a year independence dividend straight away as soon as we leave the EU that's a vast sum of money it's enough it's all of the five-year dividend that the head of the NHS is looking for to keep the mm. NHS on the road for example that's not taken into account nor does it take into account the impact of people actually now being able to resist uncontrollable immigration the impact on public services of sure. remaining doesn't take into account that there's so now, many issues okay. it does not take into now account. now we, we think we don't know we think the monetary Policy Committee who did discuss all of these things, but of course the full minutes are going to stay private and secret for six years. Do you think after this intervention we should now see those minutes published in full? Well, I, I would think that the processes will remain intact, but I suspect that the governor will be significantly regretting getting involved in politics, destabilising the markets in the exact mm. opposite to the way he should do, and I'm quite sure he will be wishing he hadn't done it. Well, I guess when it comes to economic risk, some people will be saying, yes, it was, it was Mark Carney, but it's also been Christine Lagarde, it's been the IMF, it's been President Obama, it's been a whole series of big voices, substantial voices, in independent of British politics who have been saying the same thing. Yeah, I mean, there is this big institutional ganging up on the poor British voter. But the truth is, these people who are very rich, very successful, no, well, no skin in the game, and what they don't see is the poor British voter who is trying to get a decent primary school place, who's trying to get a doctor's but, appointment. Those are the people who are actually having to live with the consequences of being a part of this over-bloated EU bureaucracy. If I may say so, you yourself used exactly the same list of institutions, Obama, Christine Lagarde, Mark Carney himself, when you were defending the government's record against the Labour Party in the House of Commons. So why can we not listen to them now? Well, actually, that's not the case, in fact. Well, you know, I have, I, I've I got think, the quotes here for well, you, no, the, <laughs> as you the, may have guessed. The IMF have absolutely got it wrong in regards to the UK economy. They were the ones who came out and said we should not sort out our public sector debt problem. And, of course, now they have, in fact, eaten their words. Their forecasts right. were completely okay. wrong. Andrea Leadsom praising the importance of the opinions of Carney, Obama and Lagarde in the House of Commons to Labour's economic spokesperson, Cathy Jameson. You said perhaps she'd like to hear the views of Christine Lagarde, who runs the IMF, and quoted the views of Christine Lagarde. And you said the same thing about Obama. You said the same thing about Mark Carney. When it suits you, you quote all these people in evidence because they are big authorities. And when it doesn't suit you, you say they're ganging up on the poor British voter. 
I mean, actually, specifically on the IMF, that was in the context of the fact that the IMF had had to eat their words for getting their forecast wrong. I mean, I've always been very mm. clear. Economic forecasting is, to a large extent, an art, not a science. So, therefore, for the Bank of England... A wet to in get the involved, Yeah, it really mm. is, actually. You know, I mean, you know, it is crystal ball gazing. And maybe Mark Carney would like to say how many times the Bank of England has got their forecast spot on. It's not very many. The IMF, likewise. You know, these people all said we should join the euro... Mm. The world would end, the city would implode if we didn't join the euro. Look at us. It's the most successful financial services centre in the world and we didn't join the euro. And aren't we glad we didn't? And you can bet okay. your bottom dollar that Greece wishes they didn't too. One of your colleagues, Sajid Javid, has written very interestingly today in the papers saying, I mean, he's describing himself as a euro sceptic, very, very against the euro and so forth. But the thing that has changed his mind and made him a Leave voter and a Leave campaigner uh, is the... Remain. A Remain. Yeah. You're quite right. Well yeah. spotted. A Remain campaigner is that is the single market that when he looked at the effect of the single market particularly on the service economy he saw that a huge proportion of our exports depend upon it and he determined that this was the right thing to do he said of the other 50 countries the EU has negotiated to deal with not one has full access for service industries into the EU's single market well in truth, over the last 10 years, UK exports to the EU have absolutely flatlined to slightly gone backwards. The EU has been notoriously bad at intra-EU trade in services, not because there are tariffs in money terms, but because there are non-trade tariffs. So they put up boundaries and barriers to allowing UK access to the EU. So as a matter of fact, the UK has done incredibly mm. badly out of EU trade in services. Where the EU is better is in goods, yeah. and about 70% of all intra-EU trade is in goods. So the UK has lost out big time. It's simply not true to say he, well, that if we can't get access to the EU single market will be worse off. Sajid Javid said almost 80% of British jobs are part of the service sector with exports of £226 billion, nearly half of which go to Europe. But of the trade agreements the, UK, the EU has with more than 50 countries, not one gives service industries the same level of guaranteed access as the single market not one. He's not wrong about that, is he? Well, that, that, it, it's much more complicated than that. So a huge proportion of that is financial services. Now, let's be clear here. The UK is the world's biggest financial services centre. There's nowhere in Europe that even comes close. You know, we compete with New York, Singapore mm. and Hong Kong. That will not change. So the EU needs UK financial services. This isn't a sort yeah. of case of, will they just say we're not dealing with you anymore? They desperately need, you know, the UK accounts for 40% of the EU's wholesale financial services. There's so no way they'll risk losing that. But very, that, that very comes back to yes. the single market. The single market is of considerable value to many UK companies and consumers and leaving would cause at least some business uncertainty while embroiling the government for several years in a fiddly process of negotiating new arrangements, so diverting energy from the real issues and so forth. Do you agree with that? No. I, I mean... <laughs> That's Boris Johnson. OK, well, the point is that at the moment we have no tariffs between us and the EU. We've spent 43 years well, aligning the, the our market. goods and services mm -hmm. with them. So negotiating a free trade agreement will be as easy as we want it to be. It's not as if we're India where the history and the culture and the trade terms and so on are very, very very different they are completely aligned so, you so think actually be a the fast, negotiation easy negotiation totally is what you say. absolutely okay one other area because you know the city so well lots of these banks very often the american banks jp morgan morgan stanley um, goldman sachs and others say very clearly that if we vote to leave they will have to move their uh, headquarters out of london and into either frankfurt or paris mm -hmm. one of their bosses said to me the only choice i then have is frankfurt or paris C complete rubbish, Andrew. I mean, Ex the passport... Explain to us it, why. Because, you know, UK trades more dollars than in the States. The UK is a massive global financial services centre. Just Canary Wharf, one tiny bit of it, is bigger than the entire Frankfurt financial district. Outside of London, we have masses of financial services centres in Birmingham, Manchester, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, even Bournemouth, even okay. Northampton. You know, this is a huge, vast industry. It's not going anywhere. Follow the money. The Deutsche Bourse, in its merger with the London Stock Exchange, will be based in London. Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation, huge banks. So 
we shouldn't They've really worry They've just done their all. study on where to be. They're staying in London. We've got to follow the money. Stop listening to what people are saying about it. Let me ask you just one other thing, if I may. Over the course of the last couple of weeks, a story about Conservative election fraud in various elect by-elections and general election constituencies has been kind of bubbling along, and it's becoming louder and louder and louder. Eight police forces are now investigating. Isn't this something really serious now for the Conservatives? Well, you know, it's quite clear the Conservatives, as did all the other parties, had battle buses, and they all uh, made those uh, expenses claims according to the national campaign rules. And the but Conservative the Party does are only not believe they've the done anything wrong. As I understand yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think you're right, but but you know, the Conservative Party does not believe that any rules have been broken, and so you know this bubbles on. But genuinely, in all conscience, there is no there is no belief that anything has been done that, that's against the rules. Andrea Ledsom, thank you very very much indeed for joining us today.